Let's continue with the urinary system and in this video we will be looking at the neurogenic bladder. So what is neurogenic bladder? That's the name or the fancy name given to a number of urinary conditions in people who lack bladder control due to a brain, spinal cord or nerve problem. Millions of Americans have neurogenic bladder. This nerve damage can be the result of diseases such as multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's disease or diabetes. It can also be caused by infection of the brain or spinal cord, heavy metal or poisoning, stroke, spinal cord injury or major pelvic surgery. People who are born with problems of the spinal cord such as uh, spina bifida may also have this type of bladder problem. So the nerves in the body that controls the bladder, how to store, how to empty, when to empty and the problems associated with that. This can be related to the nerves giving signals to the bladder. So you can have a variety of scenarios and situations like you may end up having overactive bladder, the bladder is overacting or you may have a incontinence, so there is a leakage. You may have underactive bladder, right? Or you may have obstructive bladder in which the flow of the urine is blocked. So let me show you the slide that will make more sense. So uh, the brain and the spinal cord gives the nerve signals to the bladder and the sphincter muscles and I don't have the kidney and the ureter that goes down and connects to the bladder and from bladder we go down <coughs> into the urethra uh, from where the urine goes out of our body, right? So basically this explains the same thing so I am not going to repeat that because now you all know the anatomy of the urinary system. But when there is a, a malfunctioning of the signals given by the spinal cord and the brain that leads to this neurogenic bladder. And because the signals determines when to contract, when to squeeze and things like that. And that's how the, you know, healthy normal human being, the process works. But if there is a malfunction, then it causes overactive, underactive, you name it. Ultimately, the sphincters open up when the bladder contracts. So just to refresh and recall, as I noticed in the previous slide, there, were, there wasn't any kidney or ureter, so I have this one for you. We have kidneys, left and right, we have ureters, left and right, <coughs> gender specific details out there, um, ovary, urethra, and our bladder is right there. Now, okay, everything is same except for the gender specifics kidney, ureters, the bladder is out there, here you have a prostate, <coughs> testicles are out there and the urethra. Seeing is believing, when we talk about any disorder, if you get in your head uh, what things are where and how it works, the entire system, it stays in your brain and then you can better grasp and understand uh, what disorder and diseases we are talking why these things are happening. Again this explains the whole process uh, that I have already explained to you so I am not going to go into the same details again. So let's just uh, talk about the uh, overactive or underactive bladder. So people with multiple sclerosis, stroke, Herpes are more likely to have both kinds of symptoms, overactive or underactive. Uh, symptoms may differ from person to person, of course, and uh, people may have overactive and underactive. They can get repeated 
urinary tract infection. So that's one of the leading contributors that may lead to this disorder. And of course, the incontinence is out there. Uh, <clears throat> medically speaking, when we say frequency in overactive bladder is defined as more than eight times in 24 hours is labeled as frequent urination. So the urinary retention or obstruction with the underactive bladder is another aspect. Uh, neurogenic bladder involves the nerve system and the bladder, right? So there are two things. We are talking about neurogenic bladder. So the bladder and the nerves. Those are the two things. So what doctors do? They try to pay attention to both these aspects. And of course they start with physical exam, medical history. Uh, they recommend to keep a diary, uh, like a bladder diary that you put down all the details, how frequently you go and things like that. Uh, the PET test is a pair that changes the color to determine the signs and symptoms and to correlate. Uh, other tests include the urine culture, the bladder scan is appropriate as needed um, to, to see how you store and release the urine. Various tools, imaging tools are out there. So this, this can be a serious condition uh, but if watched carefully and treated properly then um, it's not as bad as you may think and the, the fact remains that it impacts the quality of your life. So specific treatments for the neurogenic bladder will be decided by your doctor depending upon your age, your overall health and the medical history, uh, the cause of the nerve damage that doesn't signal properly or you may have a, what type of symptoms you have, the severity of the symptoms, uh, how tolerant you are when it comes to administering a variety of drugs or the medications. Uh, procedures or therapies that may help. So the treatment for overactive bladder would be the lifestyle change. Um, there are few techniques that doctors would work with you to help you out. Uh, delayed voiding. So try to see if you can hold and wait or is a tool to determine the signs and symptoms. Okay. Likewise, schedule voiding, regardless you feel or not, you just go at the regular interval as your doctor recommends to determine the signs and symptoms and you maintain the diary and work with your doctor. Uh, the pelvic floor exercise is how you, uh, that helps to hold uh, bladder diary, dietary changes, the drugs or the medications. And now there are a couple of things here. Uh, neuromodulation, basically remember the nerve and the bladder. So nerve signals are not in alignment with the way it should be and there are abnormalities that causes this neurogenic bladder. So couple of options are out there, either they tie a wire close to the sacral nerves or a needle is inserted into the tibial nerve. Basically these are the procedures done to align the nerve signals, put it simply. So I got a slide for you and that is what it covers both scenarios. And the end result is to see that if the nerve signals are properly tied and connected to remedy the situation. So in underactive, what we reviewed was related to overactive, but even in the underactive bladder also, uh, more or less the treatment is same depending upon um, monitoring, maintaining the details, uh, schedule voiding or double voiding or maintaining the diary, dietary changes. Here the more popular is the cat uh, as a treatment option and if needed, the surgery may be required for the blood bladder augmentation if necessary. And I like this slide because it gives you all these things that we were talking about. 
So you can have an overflow and bladder, too much urine out there, bladder is unable to empty properly. Relax pelvic floor, increase abdominal pressure. That can happen. Uh, you can have oversensitive bladder where you feel the urge or you sense the urge, the neurological disorders, the signs and the signals that nerves are sending to the bladder using the spinal cord and the brain. So, we started with the urinary system and we covered a lot. I tried to not incorporate the fancy medical jargons in the languages because we have our film partners and the customers who may not have the medical background. So I tried to keep it short and simple. If and when time permit, I will come up with another presentation series like this. But I have a few concluding remarks before we depart for now. If you recall, I started with conversation with a friend of mine who is a nephrologist and uh, he told me that one of his patient has got two kidneys left kidney and right kidney in the left kidney of his patient there is nothing right and in the right kidney of his patient there is nothing left now you go through all these videos and you will see what it means okay another thing I would add here is I have my Asit Tanki YouTube channel. So, if you subscribe, you get 100 bucks. If you give me a thumbs up, you get 200 bucks. And if you put a positive, nice remarks, comments, you get 500 bucks. Now, you may be thinking, how do I make sure that I get paid 100, 200, or 500 bucks, right? Well, it's simple. You give me your social, you give me your date of birth, and your checking account number. Okay, email me your first and last name, all the details, and I will make sure that you get credit through your bank account. Electronically, it will be transferred. Okay, so I am here in Chicago, and this time of the year we get uh, freezing rain and uh, snow and all that. Uh, typical Chicago is even otherwise known as Windy City. Uh, wherever you are, be careful driving and take some extra time. And I hope to see you all soon. Take care. Bye bye.